legendary two-time Masters champion, three-time UK champion, and four-time champion of the world, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. opponent, the reigning shootout champion, who earlier this year claimed the Players' Championship, the Pistol, Mark Allen! What's the point with John? John, you want to talk? It is a fail, your choice. Martin, mate. What an Don't atmosphere break, okay, mate? at the Johnston's Paint Tour Championship. You know, world ranking event snooker began here in the fine city of Manchester <laughs> half a century ago. Now, it continues with the cream of the crop assembled for what should be a terrific week. The a tremendous break. 12. Mark Allen to break. Vying for a first prize of £150,000. Not the kind of break off you expect when you've got such a, a quality lineup. Whatever you do, don't hit the blue, they say. Yeah, it's very much a take-your-pick match, this, isn't it? Close in the head-to-heads, all that. And this is going to be hard fought from start to finish today. Of course, they come back this evening to conclude it's going to be very hard fought indeed. Back in 2020, the winner of the Tour Championship was a fellow Scot of John Higgins, Stephen Maguire. He got in because Ding didn't make the journey due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Got in, made the most of it, lifted the trophy. Now, Higgins, as he said in his interview here of right, but that said, he came so close to not being involved And Ding helped him out greatly. If he's got the mentality a free pass here, playing with house money, if you like, I think he could be dangerous. Yeah, I agree. John's going to be dangerous regardless of or why or which way he's in his way into any tournament he's always a huge danger the only thing missing in the last three years is silverware
because his stats are excellent in those three years. I'll tell you what, Mark Allen would love the kind of start to this match that he made when he won the Players' Championship. 16 players there. In the first round, he came up against another member of the class of 1992, Mark Williams. He won that match 6-3, laying the foundation brilliantly. He led 3-0 with breaks of 146, 112, and 103 frames. Williams potted just one red in falling 3-0 behind. Alan would love to do something similar here. You might have heard some applause. The first balls of the day have been potted over on table two. Mark Selby has a good early chance in the first frame against Gary Wilson. As we always do, we will keep you right up to date with what's occurring over there. Any important moments, we will tell you straight away. Yeah, this is where Mark's game has changed in these last two or three years. I'm never going to call him a grinder, but he's a scorer who can grind. As Mark, as he's shown here in the early... John having a pop at this, perhaps. Well, why did the mark? What damage? <coughs> Nothing easy. You're right, though, Alan. That was way off the mark, wasn't it? Yeah, so the first sort of moral victory goes to Mark. One. Nicely on the yellow.
This is a compliment, not a criticism. He won the Players' Championship at Telford without playing anywhere Four. near his best. Yes, he was superb against Mark Williams, as I've mentioned, in his first match, but then in beating Gary Wilson, Ali Carter, and in the final, Jean Gander, he didn't sparkle. He was just successful. I get the impression today that he will need Nine. to play well to win. And I think he knows that. Ten. The change in his game, I think, is, is also born of the fact that touching on that Players' Championship three years ago that John won, Mark has won six ranking events and the champion of champions in that time. And yet, also in that time, he scored 39 centuries less than John. It shows you that his game largely now is, is based around making sure he's tough as old boots. He always is these days. 16. It's just whether he... Well, said he got the... The scoring to go with it. Seventeen. You can't criticise is the formula that he plays with now. It's a it's a winning one. Alan knows exactly what to do to beat Higgins on the big occasion. He's actually knocked Higgins out of the Masters 32. five times, including this year, 6-5 from 3-1 down. 33. He also beat Higgins 6-2 in the semi-finals of this season's Champion of Champions. Forty. Forty-one. But just to underline the point that Alan was making there about the, the centuries. Even though Alan leads 12-11 in total meetings, is against 46. him the other way. 20 centuries in their meetings for Higgins, 17 for Allen, although that could be 18 shortly given the chance he's got here. Yeah, I mean, even there as well, 47. his cue ball hasn't been what it once was, I believe. He does, he does lose the cue ball from time to time, because that's what he's kind of been famed for throughout his career. Neat and tidy cue ball. This one's gone awkward. So, you know, a couple of shots ago, he's absolutely in A1 position, and it's gone half wrong. Self-inflicted pressure on this pink.
54. Yes, it's a, a strange old chemistry, really. For most of his professional career, at his best, Mark Allen was one of the most intimidating players on the tour. Now he's less intimidating, but 60. more successful. Yeah, it's some tally, isn't it? Last three years, six ranking titles and champions. One. And without the odd tribulation here and there, he's got this black to all but secure frame one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was just a, a minimum, so a, a minimal kick. He was up quickly off it. Thankfully, it just went in the near jaw. So, 68 in front. You want to see another red disappear to stop John coming back. Nothing better than the first frame. You outsmart your opponent. And then take the chance when it comes along. But you want a clean kill. John's still interested. Mark Allen, 69, and the frame. After all of those marathon frames in the World Mixed Doubles, Normal service is resumed. It took just 16 minutes and it was clinical. Mark Allen, 1 0. Apex of the game. 23 Q. The second frame. John Higgins to break. These two have been playing matches for 19 years. Their first encounter was actually the second professional match of Mark Allen's career. It was over at the Northern Ireland Trophy, early season in 2005, and Allen won 4-1. Yeah, it was. As I say, early season, Higgins was very rusty, but it was still a, a fine achievement for someone so inexperienced. A shot that optically was uh, more like the old Mark Allen. I think he was forced into it to a certain extent. But he'd take on those 
big shots more often three or four years ago than he does now. One. Yeah, good pot that by John. Best of 19, but you've, you've got to make a mark on things early, especially in this company. Let me tell you quickly. Seven. Mark Selby officially leads 1-0. No surprise that Wilson was unable to lay the necessary snookers. Eight. Yeah, not only scored him eight points, but the first three shots of this break will settle John in. Long red, a half tricky pink, and fourteen. A half blind red to right middle, so he'll be settled in now. Fifteen. Higgins looking for a much more pleasurable experience than two years ago in the Tour Championship. He got one hand and several fingers on the trophy, led Neil Robertson 9-4 in the final. Then crumbled 21. like he's never done before and lost 10-9. So by getting to the final, he's defending an awful lot of world ranking points. And even though he's officially 10th, on the world list with all points added right now he's so this is a really important match for him when you consider he's been a member of the top 16 since 24. 1995 unbroken he started his occupation of the top 16 Ten years before Mark Allen turned pro. Twenty five. Thirty. Just had to recycle the cue ball a couple of times, but now back in prime position. Thirty-one.
34. Even though he potted the green, he just caught it slightly thinner than he wanted to. And yet, still has a choice of three reds. Thirty-five. Yeah, that's gone a hair awkward. The red nearest this right corner is, is easily accessible, but it's not the one he wants. May play a little cannon. Nicely done. Just watch John's bridge hand, how close his middle finger gets to the cue ball these days. You see, what that does, it gives him better control, 42. providing he's in close like he is right now. The minute you start losing the cue ball, you know, he, that's when things can go a little awry. It's really all about John's cue ball these days. In terms of scoring, no problem. He's scoring as heavily now as he ever has done. <coughs> Almost there, just got to mind his 48. cue ball again here. The three reds needed. Forty nine. Perfect again. That's a bit awkward. Fifty-five. One of the reasons I'd like to see John Higgins go deep in the tournament this week. We could be in for a milestone if he does. He only needs seven more centuries 56. to become the second player after Ronnie O'Sullivan to make a thousand in professional competition. Sixty-one. Frame ball. Nicely done. Yeah, it's been a good break, hasn't it? Yeah, he lost the cue ball two or three times, but got it back together. So again, this will please him. He put a new tip on his cue, did John last week? And it seems to be behaving quite nicely. 68. 69. Lost to the Welsh youngster Jackson Page in the last 64 of the World Open in Yushan a couple of weeks ago. 68. Now he's turning the page. Hopes to write a, a new chapter in a glittering career. 76. 77. Yeah, let's hope he can go on and complete the century. I mean... 7 away from the 1,000 mark. Can't wait for that occasion. It's going to be something else. It really is, whether it comes 84. here or at the Crucible. 85. And just like that, it's all square. R1-1. 
over on table two. Gary Wilson replied nicely against Mark Selby. Wilson making a break of Thank you, the 95 in the Mark second frame. Break. One. Snooker, you often see a red potted off your opponent's break, but pocket that was a loose one from Allen. And after that, it might well prove quite costly. Six. Thirteen. Yeah, let's hope it's going to be one of those 14. matches where every mini mistake is severely punished. It has been so far. He's got himself in a tricky spot now, John. Got to beat the pink with a skew ball. Oh, that's gorgeous. That was a beauty. He had about an area of about the size of a beer mat to land on there. And he found it nicely. <coughs> so much so that he's guaranteed the low black. Let's 22. see then. Not a John Higgins type of shot with the power that he's going to have to use. Brand new cloth. Gives him every chance of a decent split. Yeah, good effort. Just got the cue ball spitting back towards him, unfortunately. 29. But it was a good crisp contact, wasn't it? Nicely struck. Yeah, that's probably five or six of those shots I'm talking about the previous red, you know, half ball, half blind timing shots. I spoke about the new tip on the queue. 35. It's obviously a good one. Those are the ones where you need that to have the touch and the feel. So the signs are looking ever better. Mark's not getting a look in at the moment. Thirty-six. Do you know Alan who puts John's tips on for him? Yeah, Fraser Patrick. Long-time professional, not on the tour at the moment. With an injury, Fraser, hope you're well, pal. I haven't seen you in a while. 
you'll be watching. Yeah, Fraser, he is the... <laughs> hey, there's no one better putting tips on cues. Jones, it's artwork, there you see it. Yeah, certain people on the circuit particularly skilled in that regard. Dominic Fourth Dale was asked to put a, a new tip on Mark Selby's cue just before the start of the Championship League this year, and he did so. He made a great job of it, and Selby ended up capturing the title. Forty-two. Yeah, I mean, players <laughs> down the years have got a wee bit of criticism, but why don't they do their own tips? When you see Fraser's handiwork, you understand why. Now, into the Reds. <laughs> Lovely shot. Yeah, it's the little glancing cannon to release two or three. But this red to left centre is a bit more tricky than it looks on 49. screen. 49. Not an awful lot to aim at, especially if he has to use some pace. Yeah, big shot it is. There you go. It's not a lot of pocket. Been bossing this for a frame and a half. Doesn't want to give it up now. Big shot this. Yeah, wasn't easy. John Higgins, 49. The biggest difference between these match tables and normal club tables, the brutal nature of the middles. They are so tight. I'm not saying the corner pockets are generous either. I'm just saying the middle pockets are the ultimate examination. <laughs> Handy flick, but it shouldn't be too... Much of an issue for John to a couple of cushions and rest in the underside of the pack. As a Celtic fan, his favourite colour normally is green, but that affini affinity has been temporarily suspended after that flick. He's a bit narrow here. Has he left the red to left middle? Foul. And a miss. He Mark has. Four. Yes, he has. Now then, I said it shouldn't have been a problem. He just misjudged it for once. Not the sort of thing John almost ever does. Now then. Just got a grip of the cue ball too much there. I don't think he can hold for a red directly, so he might have to jack up and play the cannon. The black wasn't a bad shot, it was the the red before it.
Mark Allen, eight. Yeah, that'll disappoint him. I mean, he came to the table with what looked like a golden chance to make inroads. A measly eight to show. That was the one, yeah, as Phil said. Overcooked it by a good 12 or 18 inches. OK, we've been here for, well, this is our third day now. But because the table was recovered, it's a, essentially day one pockets. That was a, a day one red going in. I think later in the week, when the, the cloth is worn in, that might have stayed on the table. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't even all that wide, was it? I think these pockets are quite challenging this week. They certainly will be, as you say, Phil, as we go. Six. Even though the red is so close to the middle pocket, he's giving this every respect. Seven. Yeah, so none of the reds are on. Directly, I don't think so. It's the cannon. I mean, looking at them with heavy odds on to be on one. Just never know. Key shot. Mid pace cannon. That'll do perfectly. Nice shot. The pink and one more red required to take the lead. Nineteen. Yes, very early days, small sample size, all that kind of stuff, fully admitted. But I like what I'm seeing from John Higgins. Twenty-seven. As he tries to reach what would be his 142nd ranking event quarter-final. That's exactly the same number as Ronnie O'Sullivan. But of course, later this week, O'Sullivan will play and he's 143rd. Thirty-six. Yeah, it's been a terrific match so far, hasn't it? Both players having a slice of the pie so far, but yeah, John just about getting the best of it. He does. <coughs> Excuse me, I agree with Phil. Looks very good. Forty-three. And when they play like this, that these absolute top players. Are, the frames seem to lob along and you, there comes a time you get the odd shot, the key shot, like the red to left middle. The rest of it is just kind of... Uh, he's going to clear up here. It's one of those, isn't it? 50. And it's similar on the other table as well. 
in the third frame over there. Both Mark Selby and Gary Wilson missed an early pot. So Wilson's proved expensive because Selby, with his second chance, got 53. in and made 85 to take a 2-1 lead. Fifty-seven. Sixty-two. Sixty-eight. So seventy-five on the frame. The class of nineteen ninety-two remain formidable. Breaks of 49 and 68, added to his 85 in the previous frame. John Higgins recovers from the loss of the opener to lead 2-1. The best seat in the house at Manchester Central today would be in that middle section there where you can see both matches at the same time. It's simultaneous excellence so far on both sides of the partition. And two world champions two multiple world champions are in front and the playing nicely. Frame. John Higgins to break. Mark Selby, and here, the focus of attention on table one, John Higgins. 20, isn't it? The break-off shot, even players like John Higgins, it's the, it's the shot that you play most what? in your life. You know, the exact same shot, but strangely enough, it's the one that you don't have control over. Leaving the half-ball red, dispatched once again. Might still be on one here to right middle with pink to the opposite one. Six. A misjudged cannon. Yeah, there it is. A bit of pressure on it though. He's bound to leave one. Players tend not to. Well, he's playing the cannon on the red by the black to release that. Seven. Again, I just think it's, it's a sign that Mark is a little more defensive than he ever was a few years ago. And certainly the early part of his career, I think back in it, he would have played on the pink. Yeah, I fully concur with that. I think he's a little more defensive, boarding on a lot more defensive. But why? As you say, why would he, he alter his approach when he's had so much success over the last couple of seasons? Yeah. Justifiable round of applause. That was a terrific pot. He's unlucky. Now, does he have the red to far left corner? Certainly has a thin one to middle if he wants it. Yeah, there you go. So. Shouldn't be a problem. Twenty-eight. 
There's a strong bond between Manchester and snooker players 30. from Northern Ireland. Of course, the great Alex Higgins was based in this city for many a year. In a different decade, the Northern Ireland number one, Joe Swale, lived here. And now the current top dog in Northern Ireland 31. is trying to win a in the city. <coughs> 34. Yeah, pity, just found a gap. Injected, good pace in that. It's good to be in Manchester, isn't it? it? Hasn't been enough snooker. Mark Allen, 34. Here, the, you know, the last two or three decades, is it? <laughs> well supported, as you can see there, and being treated to a terrific match so far. First time I came here for snooker was with my father when I was 10 years of age. The city exhibition halls in nearby Deansgate. 1973 World Championship. A championship, by the way, remembered because the quarter-final was delayed because of rain-stop play. Let's hope the roof holds up here, given the weather forecast. Now this is a test just off straight, so if he wants he can play back up table for blue. Fabulous shot. That's a fantastic. That's a shot of the match so far. One. For two or three different reasons. You know, interval coming up. Badly wants to. Back in level terms, big pressure in that terrific shot. This is perhaps why Mark doesn't score these days as heavily as he has in the past. He's not as fluent. See there again, he's lost the cue ball completely. And it's end of break, barring a double. But, he, Six. you know, he deliberated over that blue for quite some time. I know it was very awkward. 
but he could have dropped it in without using a cushion and was on the red near the black. He's going to talk himself out of one there. Back to bulk. Mark Allen, six. Yeah. Just loses his cue ball these days. Just a wee bit more than he did a few years ago, I think. Not the most telling safety shot that John Higgins has ever played, but I'll tell you what, Mark Allen is under pressure because of the openness of the table. OK, he's 40 ahead, but that could easily be erased. Here's a chance now for John. All right, it's not an absolute cinch to get out onto a colour. It does. As Phil said, they're all there. Going low on the cue ball, almost trying to punch this, get the cue ball out of there, because it's not easy. Got to trust the luck with this. Fabulous shot. To get round the back of the rug. Black there. Was top drawer. John here would love to play through the gap and cannon the pink on the way back up. He's on that line, but he's played it in a more precise way and played it pretty much to perfection. Six. Quickly, let me tell you, they've arrived at the interval on table two. And two is the operative number. It's 2-2 two -two over there, Gary Wilson. Equalising with a break of 98. Seven. Good stuff. Yeah, that was a... 50. Very nicely controlled shot. In fact, just off straight hand on the bed. Good control of this cue ball. Fifty one. And John will even be thinking here that second prizes, if he doesn't get on the red, he's going to put Mark in a world of trouble. He's holding all the aces, but can he get on the red? Fifty five. Oh. 
Wow. Thanks. John Higgins, 55. You know, it looked really close. Mark Allen, you don't down John Higgins. I would never have said anything beforehand because you're setting yourself up for a fall. But in my mind, I was thinking he could hit the pink here. Yeah, me too, Phil. Absolutely. It's free ball as well. I suppose the one good thing, John, he managed somehow to get the cue ball on the end cushion. And the thing here, obviously, Mark needs the pink. John will actually be not all that disappointed that he's back at the table with the pink as is. Yes, he's good tactically, John Higgins, but he's not that good. If he could solve that kind of problem, you should make him Prime Minister. <laughs> Higgins in bother here, but... As Alan said, that nine-point advantage, very useful. It means if Alan gets the chance, he will need yellow to pink. And, of course, the pink is out of the way. Should see Mark send the cue, the, the yellow twice across in behind the black. Nicely done.
How skillful was that? How knowledgeable was that? Higgins knew the shot was on. He knew he was capable of pulling it off, and he did kill the white as he killed off the frame. An acceptable outcome for Mark Allen. Yeah, John sending the yellow twice across this time and behind the black. Didn't quite hit it, but decent result. Blue helping him in some way. And the very fact he's got the cue ball virtually tight to the cushion makes it a bit more awkward if Mark wants to use side. It's one of those in an ideal world he'd, he'd like to be able to play with tons of left and back heel the yellow possibly into the pink and release that. But I don't think he can do that. He can't get to the extreme edge of the cue ball. Get enough side on it. He did just that, but I don't think that's what he played. I think he just played the thin clip. But either way, it's a nice result, isn't it? Different look about it now. He used to commentate on pool with an American called Ted Lerner, who, one of his phrases, there's a wall of balls. And there's a wall of balls down the table here. And, of course, Higgins has hit the, the yellow ball behind it. Half chance for John. Not huge pressure on it. Good cue ball. Great pot. Sure. Oh, yeah, now then, this is a biggie. This is virtual frame ball if he decides to take it on. Got it. Five. I know it's only four frames, but the way he's played in them. Very encouraging for all of his many Nine. fans. And it poses the question, how has he not won a world ranking title for three years playing like this? Okay. 
John Higgins, 14 and the There's no doubt Mark Allen has his hands full with John Higgins, who after losing the first frame has played beautifully to take a 3-1 lead at the mid-session interval. The next four frames. Thank you, Jill. Yeah, looking forward to the second half of the session. It's been a lively start. And Higgins relieved Thank in the end to win that frame. fourth frame, I'm Mark sure, Allen's just to, to get the, the cushion. Long way to go. First to ten to reach the quarterfinals. Remember the head-to-head -head coming in, 12-11 to Allen. It's two each this season between them. It always seems to be close between these two. Don't be surprised if that pattern continues this evening. Right now, I'm sure Higgins just looking to get some sort of lead here coming back tonight. That cue ball just to well, slow up. Mm, no good. I mean, he's looking at the brown, but I think they would be hampered too much by the green, so just a little nestling behind the green. Definitely hit the green now, did he? Double, 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 you hit the white twice. Okay. Oh, he's double. Oh. Yeah, so he's on up one, to a, a double hit on the cue ball. <laughs> <laughs> Problem for John Higgins is that, of course, it's a free ball. Good sportsmanship, that. Same amount of free ball. Yeah, he felt it. Bramble. And immediately <laughs> owned up to it. Wasn't cued very well, a bit jabby that one. We won't be happy with that, Mark Allen. He's looked sharp so far. He's looked sharp all season. It's just the odd match and the odd moment in a match that's interesting him. I'm sure as the World Open was coming towards a climax, Five. he was sort of crossing his fingers because obviously in 12th spot, other players could have gone past him. It didn't happen. So here he is. Just brushed the green there, but you can see he's still on this red. Six. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a new cue he's using, but he certainly tinkered a little bit with how we set up. Put a inch or so off the bottom of the queue to make it a little bit shorter. And even when we get a look at his bridge hand, not from this shot, obviously. When he gets his hand on the table, we'll see how close his hand 11. and his forefinger is to the tip of the queue, which has got a little bit shorter over the last year or so. He seems to think that he has more control of it. There's Q action. And well, has he spotted another plant here? Is that a tree ball plant? Very risky. Well, I'm not quite sure whether that can be made or not. 
He's looking at it. We'll be moving a lot of reds here. Oh, yeah. Very well spotted. Well, it's not the pink. As the pink doesn't go. That red has come up. It's blocked the blue up into the... As we look at the pink there, it's blocked the blue up into the green pocket. That could have been nicer, this... Green ball. Fifteen. but this is a definite chance now. He's kept this break going very well. He's already had breaks of 85, 75, 55 in this match. Twenty one. Yeah, let's just have a look just to make sure that the black goes into that left corner pocket, which I think it does, so might be you can play either red here. Twenty-two. Well, he did look at the black, but obviously didn't like that, the angle of that red. So he's played for the pink. And there you see, you see how close his, his hand is to the cue ball, I'm not throwing as much cue out. And that's why he feels he sort of got more control. It's changed a little bit over the years, John. 28. 29. Yeah, left himself a nice angle on the pink here. He can put the pink into the middle, just cannon into the, the red, just below it to the left. Look very confident, doesn't he? He's very, very self-assured around the table. 35. John Higgins looks very, very good. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of this this season. But what's been happening is the odd thing has gone wrong, and he, he sort of struggled mentally to recover at times. So, the moment things going well, he needs to press on. He must be feeling good right now. We judge 36. the greats, and you know, let's be clear, he is an all-time great. Of course, he is by very high standards, so if they even just slightly dip, it feels like a big fall off in form, but the fact is a lot of players will be very happy with the season John Higgins has had, even though he hasn't won a tournament. Very fact he's here in this event. You know, it's the one year list, it tells you he's had a good season in ranking events. Yeah, he's been very consistent, hasn't he? Well, he'd be too. very disappointed. I'm sure, uh, you know, he wants to be picking up silverware when he's looking at the likes of Ronnie and Judd, and even his opponent, Mark Allen, who's picked up 43. plenty of silverware this season already. He, that's exactly what he wants. He's not looking just to be happy getting the semi-finals or finals when he's used to winning, and he has done for so many years. 
So that sort of keeps them motivated. I know you were out in Riyad Ken. He, he got the closest of anyone, didn't he, to possibly making the super maximum with the golden ball. That was exciting. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, 50. very exciting. He got down to the yellow. Uh, he was a little bit unlucky, actually. He just got too close to the yellow 51. from the black. But, yeah, it was, it was getting very exciting at one stage. And he was feeling it. He said it afterwards. He said he never felt as nervous <laughs> ever playing in his career as he was on that possible 167. And the half a million bonus that went with it. Quick glance at the scores, 55 ahead. 58. So it needs red and a colour. Fifty-nine. Yeah, it needs the black to lead by sixty-three with fifty-nine on. Remember he left Alan a free ball initially because he the double hit, but Alan didn't pot the brown. Thing he'd like to have been nicely on the red to continue because it's only 66. one snooker to tie, but the important thing was the seven points. He's contemplating does he take the red on? Because if he misses it, he doesn't want to leave his opponent an easy chance to maybe get three red blacks and try and play for snookers on the the last red, so that's exactly why he refused the pot there. That's real. John Higgins, experience. 66. Right there. <laughs> and the young wooding professional. Take note of that. one shot in the middle of that break from John Higgins very clever that little plant that he picked out and have a look at this for a little beauty three ball plant had to be made excellent shot taking this red on because I'm not quite sure unless he can hold for the, the black if he can play a little cannon when potting this red on the red just to the right of it and hold for the black into the opposite corner he may take it on and that's what he's played and he's played it really well great shot well, so it gives him a chance This was very well worked out. Have a look at it. Not only the pop, but have a look at the cannon on the red, the hole for the black. Great shot.
8. Yeah, another two reds and blacks, and maybe play for the snooker on the, the last red. Nine. Because that red left of the black, okay, may move it here if he wishes. But it's in a good position for a snooker. He didn't play that very well. Sixteen. Can he pot the red? Maybe play a little cannon into the red above it and hold for the black again. Yeah, good shot. Seventeen. So he's still giving himself a good chance here, Mark Allen. Lovely little death touch there. Yeah, what he's probably contemplating. Does he pot black and then red black and maybe play for a snooker on the colours because he needs one four point snooker and then all the balls to tie. But or he keep the last red on the table and maybe hope for a free ball. So that's what's going through his mind at the moment. Twenty-four. Mark Allen, twenty-four. Well, that's not a snooker. John Higgins has an edge of this red and be disappointed, Mark Allen there. Good opportunity to get a good full ball snooker. <laughs> Missed it. Twenty-five. Mark Allen, Gary Wilson about to make it 4-2 against Mark Selby on table two. Of course, he's been slightly forgotten with O'Sullivan and Trump hoovering up so many titles. Gary Wilson's won two ranking events this season. On the head-to-head, -head, he's 8-1 down to Selby, but maybe today things will start to turn around. He's playing well there and about to go 4-2 up. If he does, it'll have to be a good one, clearly. <laughs> I 
Well, here's a chance. Stunned that cue ball in behind yellow and green. Big target. Disappointment there. And Mark Allen. I knew that was a wonderful opportunity for a snooker. This time it's not a great angle. Don't think he can get that cue ball behind green and yellow this time. Set up for that, but shouldn't be too much of a problem for John Higgins. Just a slight swerve around his brown. Uh, he's had a few chances, hasn't he, to get good snookers. See Paul Collie, the referee, just watching the sleeve there. John Higgins over the green. Both of these players have been in the final. The Tour Championship, Allen in 2020, lost to Maguire. Higgins two years ago, of course, was 9-4 up, lost 10-9 to Robertson. Well, a chance to put the frame away. If he knocks this red in, it's surely going to be 4-1, and that means the rest of the afternoon, although it's a long match, some big frames coming up for Mark Allen. He doesn't want to be coming back miles behind, clearly, tonight. to be yeah and now is a chance to try and hide that cue ball behind green and yellow knock this red down towards this top end of the table oh once again that's such a poor attempt he'd be so disappointed with that Mark Allen and John Higgins will be very relieved. Yeah, he's having a little smile to himself. He's had a few chances to get that cue ball behind yellow and green, but he's failed.
Well, this red does cut. And once again, if it goes in, it's definitely going to be 4-1. As I say, the last three frames now, big for Alan to stay in touch here. John Higgins looking sharp. Pot success at 94%. Seven. He was the last man in John to Higgins the event. He looked and to be frame. the last man standing come Sunday and John Higgins looking good already in this match 4-1 long way to go but three big frames for Mark Allen remain here in Manchester this afternoon frame six John Higgins to break Mark Allen's only substantial contribution that 69 break in the first of course he's used to these long matches, he won't be panicking yet by any means, but even so, he knows he wants to put himself in a position as the applause for the century on table two, put himself in a position to very much be in touch tonight. Fantastic to see a full house on the first afternoon. It's a new venue, it's been a concerted effort I think from Will Snooker Tour to make this a bigger event. New venue in a big city, bigger field, bigger prize money, and the people have turned out in kind. Yeah, what a doubt. Great venue. Very, very impressed with it. And even in the, the Q zone as well, what they've done there. It's hive of activity in there. Look at that. Great crowd in this afternoon. Love their snooker. Yeah, all these events build up, you know, the first Crucible, there are only 16 players, the first Masters are only 10, the UK Championship started as a non-ranking event, and they were all built up, and now, of course, they are established majors. Yeah, and I think this is definitely one of those majors now on the tournament calendar for all the players to get into this Tour Championship. Last big tournament before the Crucible. I've had a look yet. Mark Allen just asked the referee, Paul Collier, has he had a look just in case he misses this? Going for a very fine edge, and he's got a good shot. And remember, you, you only qualify on the one year list. This is the sixth staging of the Tour Championship. There's one former winner in it, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Neil Robertson's won it twice. He's not here. Steve Maguire, he's not here. And, of course, Sean Murphy last year. But you don't get in as defending champ. Yeah, it wasn't an easy shot. I'm trying to punch it in. Bit of pace and 
trying to get on the black, the black into the right centre. Possible long red for Mark Allen, but I wouldn't be surprised if he turned this down. It's 4 1 down, he hasn't had much table time. Ah, oh, good shot. Well played. When you've been kept cold. Sometimes those shots become so much more difficult, but he cued it beautifully. Oh, but didn't cue that one very nicely at all. Mark Allen won. Is he on the red? Well, maybe he's got away with it. He's put his hand up. So he's not on his intended red, but there's a red in the middle of the pack. That's on, maybe. Can he get enough of it, John Higgins? He's having a look, maybe not. No, I mean, Alan got away with that, but it's a concern nonetheless. The sort of fluency has gone. As I say, he made a good start. He looked good in that opening frame, but... Highest break since then, just 34. Average shot time down at 29 seconds. Look like they're in a line. There you see them. And he can hold for the black maybe as well. No, he's gone back up the table. But still. Four. Nice to get on a plant. Didn't look like he had anything. So good blue here, back down for the reds. Die. Yeah, can't get on pink or black here, so back up for a blue or a ball colour, you would feel. He's left himself an angle now. Ten. Possible. Okay, he's got a few loose reds. Eventually, he'd like to make some sort of connection on maybe onto the pink or the red beneath the pink to try and get pink or black back into play. That's what he's looking at. If he plays a little cannon on the pink, hold for red into the left corner, maybe. Doesn't have to. I can concentrate on. A couple of blues for the time being. See what he tries here. Yeah, he's held for the loose one. But he'd like to get on pink or black very soon. Very difficult 15. to keep the break going just on the blue alone. Again, cue ball. Twenty-one. It's going to stray. Stray. 
That's such a poor shot. He's normally his cue ball is so good. But he's overhit that by quite some distance. Trying to get on those two reds just above the black spot to the left. Look how far it's travelled. Still got a possible red into this left middle, but certainly no gimme. Oh, well played. And he might be on the black as well. Good that shot, that. good recovery. Yes, there's no doubt. Mark Allen is a fierce, fierce competitor, and he's been able this season to win matches not at his very best. 29. He's been able to accept not being at his very best. And has found the winning formula. You can't argue with three titles in amongst all the ones for Ronnie and Judd and Gary Wilson. Of course, he's won Champion of Champions, shoots out the Players' Championship, of course, recently. Thirty. This is where it always matters in matches, when you're behind, when you need to find something, when the questions are asked. That's where you see the really top players invariably come good. Yeah, there's no doubt in his tenacity, character. 37. Has it in abundance. He's crafted his break very nicely. OK, ran out of position. 38. But retrieved the situation. And now getting that black, which he's trying to do early on in, the, in this break. So important to get the black back on its spot. So difficult to win a frame, just trying to get top side of the blue every time. So it just makes the break so much easier. 45. Black and pink are on the spots. 46. Now this is where the damage is done. Fifty-four. So, black lead by sixty-one with sixty-seven on another red for four-two. And for all Mark Allen's ability now to scrap frames out, this is how he prefers to play. This is how everyone prefers to play: kill frames off in 61. one visit. John Higgins, unusually for him, played a poor safety. 62. And left a long red on. Sixty-nine. Yeah, and that's seventy. The, the thing about the top of professional, any professional sport, you just cannot take your eye off the ball for one minute, one casual shot, stroke. Could cost you. That's exactly what's happened to John Higgins here. 76. <coughs> 77. But he's done well here, Mark Allen. Particularly from 4 1 down. Crafted his break very, very well now off this red. He's got it perfect just to drop it in. Dead weight. Very tight. Yeah, well played. 
84. Keep the break down and possibly make a century. Yeah, this is, as I say, how he likes to 89. kill frames off, particularly in a long match. You don't want them all to be lengthy affairs, scrappy affairs. 90. Yeah, and it just shows you even, you know, though you mentioned his average shot time, it's down to 27 seconds now, which is still pedestrian for Mark Allen. But this is how he can play. The average shot time at the break in you know, the last six or seven shots is probably only about 10 or 12 seconds. 98. So this green for his 40th century of the season. John Higgins will take notes of. 105. The fluency has returned from that opening frame. I think everyone here knows whoever's going to win this tour championship is going to have to play some seriously good stuff. It's the best players of the season. Hundred and sixteen. So a triple clearance. Mark Allen, one hundred and twenty-three. One hundred and twenty-three from the Northern Irishman to win his second frame with two left to play this afternoon. John Higgins' lead is reduced to four. Just made one hundred and twenty-three. Seventh frame. Mark Allen to break. One. Well, it's a quintessential shot to nothing and not on a colour, so just a little dolly up to the yellow. Oh, he's I not got he there. Drop back. He's not got there. Back, so just fell back. All right, foul. Well, Paul Colley, the referee, thought he had hit John it, Higgins but Higgins Mark insisted Allen that fought. he didn't. <laughs> Play again, please. It's always obviously a very delicate shot, that he was so close to it in the first place. But too delicate, as it turned out. <laughs> yeah, and you're afraid to make a little push shot. Well, that's a couple of times. He double hit the last one when he was trying to roll up you know, in the green. Didn't cost them then. Oh, good shot. Yeah, very good. Of course, this is a first round match, the top four seeded into the quarterfinals. So the winner will play Ding Jun Wee, who today is celebrating his 37th birthday. Got into the top four in the end through getting to the World Open final recently in China.
Okay. Okay. Good pace of cue ball, but trying to get cover with the yellow, but as you see, hasn't got the full cover on all the reds. Got to be careful here, John Higgins. The two reds that he's going to hit here. Second, the bottom red may go off the red, off the black, and go towards this right corner pocket. Played it nicely, and this time he may have got cover. He's played that really well. Excellent shot. Yeah, you have to be careful there. He's just having a look there. But his cue maybe off one cushion, just short of the right middle pocket, and maybe nestling into the reds beneath the pink, but that's a bit risky. If he doesn't get the pace right, he could leave a red on. Shot time coming up to one and a half minutes, so I don't blame him. He has to work this out. Doesn't want to leave any sort of a pot on. I've had a look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just checking with the referee, of course, if there's a replacement, it has to go back in the exact spot. Saying he, that's not the red he's actually playing, but anyway, he'll take it. Yeah, now he, yeah, I'll tell you what happened there. He's, he was looking at it, of nestling into the pack, but didn't realise that he could see an edge of that red all the time. <laughs> that's what he was having to laugh about. And he took over a minute and a half wondering where he could lay into the reds when he could see the edge of the red all the time. Didn't realise.
Well, this is a sort of mini battle within the larger battle that is the match. And indeed, this session now, these two big frames, obviously, Higgins would love 6 2. Very commanding lead. Wanted to come past that yellow, so it's not to leave a chance at the red. Yeah, it doesn't like taking this red on because where's the value going to come from? How can he get on a colour? natural path of the cue ball if he does take this red on into the bottom left corner it's going into the reds he's going to refuse it well this is a battle now nine minutes since uh, the last pot in this frame That was the red that Higgins potted and then just failed to nestle in behind the yellow. You get these match matchups sometimes, certain pairings always seem to, the matches always seem to kind of go the same way. Very often it's close between these two. We saw at the Masters, he went to a decider. Alan got the win that day. A lot of respect between them. We heard that in the interviews with Rob before play began. Obviously, John Higgins is someone Alan would have looked up to growing up. And Higgins well aware how good his opponent is as well from experience first hand one another plant nicely picked out this time nestling right up behind the grain this is going to be tough oh -ho. I know he's very, very good at getting out of snookers, John Higgins, in the business. But how is he going to get out of this and keep it safe? We may just play into the jaws of the pocket here. Yeah, just play off the angle of the jaws of the pocket and hope... Have a look at this for a shot. This might be okay. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Brilliant. And this may be a, another hot shot, maybe, for the week, David. What do you think? Have a look at this. Playing off the angle of the pocket, down towards the reds. Yeah, a bit of magic from the wizard, if we're sure. <laughs> Out, wasn't it that red and held nicely for the pink into the left center trying to make something happen <laughs> seven that kiss was not favorable at all
Mark Allen, seven. Yeah, he was watching that red very closely, wasn't he, to see where it finished. Could have left it on on another day. I think this could get very tense this evening if it's uh, certainly close all the way. These matches, they feel like finals, don't they? Because, you know, it's what we're used to in finals, two sessions, first to ten. In fact, every match now for the rest of the season is going to be at least best of 19, isn't it? The World Qualifiers into the World Championship itself. I don't think it's a touching ball, but John Higgins can see these reds down the right-hand side. He's going to have to play off the cushion. Yeah, he's got to try and nestle on that red just to the right of the black spot, off two cushions. It's all about the pace here. Doesn't want to hit it too hard. Otherwise, he might leave a red on. Delicate little shot. Has it got the pace off the second cushion? It's close, but I don't think it's there. Foul. No, and the miss. That will go Mark back. Allen, four. Back. Good line. Paul Collier, the referee in charge here. Talk about the class of 92, actually, he, he started when he was very young refereeing in that uh, open era where Higgins and O'Sullivan Williams started out, many others as well. Still going strong. Does that look? Okay, Mark. Yeah, one of the best referees in the business has been for a number of years. And, of course, doubles up as a tournament director as well throughout the season. Pace looks better this time. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good length on the safety from Higgins, and another epic safety duel. This
few balls gone close to this corner pocket. Oh, wow. unlucky, unlucky. Ten Higgins four. What has he left? Is there a possibility for John Higgins here? The red below the pink may be into this left corner. Playing it with an element of safety. Cue ball back up towards brown or yellow, you would say. No, doesn't like it. Gonna go back to it, is he? Yeah. It seems a straightforward shot. Just as long as he gets through the gap between the, the two reds. Off two cushions back down. Set towards the bulk area. Something about it's catching his eye. Maybe he feels that that red to the right of the black. Maybe he feels if he takes the the red on, the cue ball is going towards that red just to the right of the black, so he can't avoid it, so. Taking this one on, a little bit more difficult this, and there's pressure on it. He will leave something. If he misses, I'm sure of it. Yeah, there was more pressure on that. And he has left something for Mark Allen. One. So, it's been a lot of safety in this frame, but now Mark Allen does have a scoring opportunity. Trying to sort of switch back to that mode again, which he did do, do of course, in the last frame. Nice little cannon on that red, just to hold the cue ball. Seven. For a couple of reds into this bottom right corner pocket. There you see, all, all three reds pot. Good opportunity, this. Eight. A little shake of the head tells us maybe the angle is not to his liking. Wanted to be straighter on the pink. It still shouldn't be a problem. The red to the right of the black is, is okay. Just gotta play for that. Okay. Just stunned it. Pink in. Cue ball just a couple of inches below the spot. Oh, he's let it go, is he? He's let it go. Well, he's played the follow through. He should have just played the stun shot. Fourteen. Oh, what an error. Have a look. If he stuns the cue ball, just cue ball past the pink spot only by an inch or two, and he would have been on this red into the right corner. Mistake and end of break. What a let off for John Higgins. Mark Allen, 14. <coughs> yeah, three minutes that 14 break. And in the end, quite a big error. 
I think that's a good point as well. I mean, that's what he, he's been doing over the last couple of seasons. Just looking at so many shots when the obvious one is there. One. Well, he's back in. Just avoided the in-off. He would have been unlucky there. So can he now maybe just pick the pace up a little bit? Just try and refine that fluency. He looked brilliant in the last frame when he made the century. Now, has he got the gap? Oh, he has. Unfortunate to be on that red. Still, certainly not a gimme. It's missable this. You should see him digging down on the cue ball. Yeah, it's missable. Oh, well, maybe not missable. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> close. Mark Allen, five. One. So that's the first pot from Higgins in 26 minutes. He's been thoroughly on the back foot in this frame, but now he is at the table and only 20 odd behind. There were, when the season began, a few question marks over his top 16 place, but. Number 10 in the world, he receded, of course, at the Crucible once again. He's been Six. top 16 now for 29 years, unbroken. Obviously, he wants to carry that on to make it 30 next year. Seven. That's quite incredible. Uh, John Higgins could misjudge that positional shot by such a margin. 13. And that may be caused with that little piece that he put on the, the bottom of the queue. Of course, it adds more weight to the queue. But still. Well, that's a bad misjudgment. You saw him hang his head there. 
bitterly disappointed. It was a good opportunity for John Higgins. Yeah. John Higgins, 30. Another one in this frame, going begging. The longest frame now of the match, 29 minutes and counting. Possibility of a plant here. They're not dead set. You see, it's going towards the right hand side of the the pocket, but there's enough room between the two reds that certainly can be made. Mark Allen didn't spot it. Yeah, good shot. And he's on the pink, is he? He is. One. Seven. Yeah, from Mark Allen's point of view, it's almost as bad as missing an easy pot when you leave something like that. You haven't spotted yourself. Kicking himself in the chair, Mark Allen, given the opportunity for John Higgins now. Eight. He has to sit and wait and hope his opponent messes up some shape or form. <coughs> Left himself an angle on the red. The red 14. to the right of the black is sort of in the way. May want to bring that into the open here. That's okay. I think he's going to be on the 15. yellow. And he's got the black away from that red, so that's exactly what he wanted. Seventeen. Yeah, just looking at the scores, all level, which means that John Higgins is going to need that green that's tied to the ball cushion. Got a bit to do before then, but he will have looked at the scores, no doubt. Eighteen. You know what he has to do, but that green could be the pivotal ball in this little break here, and for John Higgins to win the frame from this position. Twenty-three. Twenty-five. Well, it's gone wrong. Didn't want that little kiss on that red when potting the other one. Pink one. John Higgins, twenty-five. Yeah, 
Yeah, just that little kiss. Change the course of the cue ball, the desired path. John Higgins continue to break now. He's got to try and hit this and hope he gets safe. And that's pretty good for Mark Allen. He'll be happy with that. Good shot. Yeah, got to be careful here, clearly. The green is still going to come into play either way. Foul and a miss. John Higgins, four. Back going back. Yeah, it's an unusual way to play this shot. It's a big swerve on, on this brown. You see, it's all ball snooker, but I mean, if he plays off two cushions, he's just afraid that if he plays the two cushion escape, that he's trusting a bit of luck to get the red safe. So what he's trying to do is swerve around the brown, just catch the right hand side of the red, knock it towards the side cushion. swear than that. Yeah, I think it's a bit more to the left. There's a bit more of a swerve. John Higgins gets up to have a look. I mean, that doesn't give us a close angle. That looks all right. But if you want to move it this way a bit tighter, I don't mind making it tighter. Yeah, I've checked on the screen, and it seems Just basically right. Way, yeah? But Alan, obviously, is playing the shot. He would have a better sense of it. You OK with that, John, yeah? OK, thanks. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, that looks better because it's a bit more of a swerve now. Oh, he's missed it again. Foul. And a miss. John Higgins, four. John Higgins going to come around and have a look. This red is cuttable into the middle. He may take it on. Yeah, he's going to take it on. It's a big shot, this. Certainly not easy into a blind pocket, and of course, middle's being the, without a doubt, the tightest pocket's on the table, so this is a tough one. I'm sure he was trying to finish on the black because then he wouldn't have needed the green with the yellow. She caught the jaws of the pocket. Yeah, but a 17 point lead. This is where you, you put a colour safe. Particularly a colour that you know your opponent's going to need, which is this case is going to be the pink. Trying to get that tight on the side cushion and trying to get the snooker. On the blue. Thanks. I think you may be able to see the yellow. I don't think it's a full ball snooker. Okay, thanks.
Yeah, the problem for Mark Allen, he thinks that if he hits it off one cushion, maybe in and off, but two cushions is probably a little bit safer. Has he hit it hard enough? Needs to go to yellow. Yeah, he's okay. The battle continues. 41 minutes now, this frame. Green, of course, is still going to play its part. Of course, if Higgins can win the frame, really puts pressure on Allen last of the afternoon to sustain touch, just 5-3 as opposed to 6-2. He'd love to move the green here yeah, with the yellow, but I don't think that's possible. Yeah, he just didn't have the right angle. He really wanted that green off the cushion. Well, he's got second prize. He's got a snooker with the brown. Foul and a miss. Mark Allen four. Back. Yeah, he's trying to play off okay. both side cushions here. Just try and nestle into the yellow. Trying to hit it off one. These are you know, valuable Mark points Allen. for Mark Allen. Back, yeah. Foul. He fluked it. Well, he's been lucky. He's got away with it. Yeah, and he's now shot the black safe as well, inadvertently. He's in front, so could favour him later. What a duel this is, this frame. 45 minutes now. Allen drop that yellow onto the green, try and lift the black off the cushion. No. I think he did. There's a little right smile on his face. Maybe he did, but just didn't 
execute it way he would have liked. take this yellow one it's a natural angle for the cue ball just to drop behind the green no didn't like it there we are 46 minutes but it's not like football someone doesn't appear telling you how many more minutes there are <laughs> Could be quite a while yet. It's brought the green into play. So that slightly changes the exchange on the yellow now, the green out in open play. Unfortunately, I think covering it, this is the pocket that Luca Bissell last night in that doubles final just couldn't seem to pot a ball in. Of course, having to get back for the green, so playing with power. Tough match snooker, this. It's April the 1st, but there's no falling around here, is there? This is very serious stuff. That yellow needed to be a bit more pace and a bit more of a fuller contact on the yellow to knock it up towards his top cushion. So another chance for John Higgins. Can he pot this yellow and get on the green? Yellow's in and he's on the green. What's out of an angle? Good. It's not the best. Got a slight angle. Rainer Brown will put him 18 points ahead with 18 remaining, so he's going to need the blue. Five. Not straightforward. He'll have to bridge over the pink and make his cue a little bit more awkward. Yeah, it was just a little bit more awkward. And Pink, you saw it, the cue. He had to raise the cue a little bit. John Higgins, five. It's going to be very difficult to try and win the frame from this visit, but Mark Allen will be just delighted to be back at the table with a chance. Good pot. Pink is not in a bad position for the double. <laughs> I 
Hey, look at that. Hey, he's coming around. Have a look at the double. Okay, he won't be able to get anywhere near the near the black, but he won't mind that. Pot the blue. Maybe double the pink and play good safety on the black. That's what's probably going through his mind right now. Guy. position of his cue is where he thinks the cue ball is going to finish, leave himself a safety shot on the black, but double it is. It looks pretty good, right in the middle of the pocket. So it's going to be a black ball game. Yeah, what drama. All on this last ball, 5-2 or 4-3. Yeah, good shot, and now the pressure is on John Higgins. He had that brown, he had a few chances in this frame. He didn't convert. So he'd be feeling it a little bit more tense than Mark Allen for sure. Side to side, black on one side cushion, cue ball on the other. Always the possibility that he could leave a, a double. Not this time, but maybe a cocked hat double. That's, Three cushions. Black will go close to this left-hand middle pocket. So always a possibility. Not this time. But he's played that pretty good. He'll be happy with that. So much effort from both in this frame. It's one of those, if you lose it, it's all been in vain. <laughs> Once again, side to side shot from John Higgins. Mark Allen can't really do much here. Just get the black safe, middle of the top cushion. That's all he could do. Now, will John Higgins attempt the double up into the yellow pocket? Leave the cue ball exactly where the black is, tight to this top cushion, but he's had a look at the double. Mark Allen having a look as well. Look at him looking right down the line, Mark Allen. He'll know if it's, it's not there, but he's having a look right down the line. Yeah, because... I think he would agree with most people in the game, John Higgins, the best doubler. So he would have been concerned. He was in position, wasn't he? John Higgins play the up and down the black art go side to side he's already played side to side twice it's a more a much easier shot but always fearful of leaving the possibility of the double if he doesn't get it right and, well may attempt to double into the left middle pocket Mark Allen He's tried it. It's not there, though. <coughs> Half a chance for John Higgins here. Attempt the pot. Would probably 
gives a little sort of telltale sign of how John Higgins is feeling right now. Could have easily gone for the pot there on the black. Be going for it this time. He's going to be careful with the cue ball. It's going to be running. He's going to have no control over it. Tough shot. Yeah, the white was close. Now, Mark Allen, after 56 minutes of battle, has a chance to put this black away and close to within one. What a frame it's been, my word. They've both given everything, only one can win it. This is Alan's chance. Ribbles in. Mark Allen, seven on the frame. And Mark Allen wins an epic penultimate frame of the afternoon. To stay in touch in this match, John Higgins sees his lead. But anyway, the wall is up, and there's one more frame to come between Mark Allen and John Higgins. Allen in his seat, we're just waiting. Well, in fact, Higgins is returning. So whatever happens, it's going to be close. But remember, it was 4-1 to John Higgins, so he would, of course, be disappointed if it's just 4-4 at the end of the session. But uh, what a frame that was. In the end, Allen knocking in the black right at the death. Yeah, he will have felt he missed the trick there, John Higgins. He had, as I said, ample opportunities to put that frame away a lot earlier when the pressure came on. Yeah. He missed Thank his you. chance on the black, so... The eighth frame. John Higgins frame to break. For both players. Last frame of the session. Another example as well, Mark Allen wouldn't say he's been at his best this afternoon necessarily, but my word, he's a battler. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the shot of someone who's just won a long frame and he's on a high coming into the next one. Yeah, and I like the way he played it. I mean, look where the cue ball is. Well short of the ball line. Confident shot. No element of safety in that whatsoever. Now, can he play a good positional shot here? Red left to right of the pack is available. Ooh, would you believe it? Hold on, it's not stopped yet. Oh. Mark Allen won. Oh. After such a good opening red. I'd be so disappointed with that Miss Yellow. Well, how's John Higgins feeling? Obviously a bit deflated after that last frame. He seemed to lose a bit of confidence along the way, but he can still get a two frame cushion coming into this evening by winning this one, trying to end the afternoon on a high. But of course, the opposite can happen as well. And, yeah, rather angry walk back to his seat.
wonderful pot. It's going to be too pacey. Yeah. Just travelled a little bit too far for comfort here on this red. Could take the red on, but no value going into the red above it, and certainly not guaranteed to be on a colour, so that's why he's refused it. Oh, Callum, he hasn't played a good one. A little bit edgy out there now. Both players feeling a little bit tense. Yeah, he actually flicked off a second red there. Uh, that could have gone badly wrong, actually. Both looking to just concentrate for this last frame. They'll have, a, of course, a couple of hours break till they come back this evening. A bit fresher, maybe. This match concludes tonight. There's also the start of the match between Mark Williams and Tom Ford. Selby and Gary Wilson will be back tomorrow afternoon to conclude. So often see delicate shot like that go wrong, but he's managed to drop in behind the blue Higgins, just tapping the table. One of those rivalries, it's intense on the table, but there's nothing personal between them. They're just both real hard match players. What that rivalry means is that they show each other a lot of respect, so neither player taking undue risks in this match.
So, good safety from Allen has forced the mistake from Higgins. Now can Mark Allen, second good scoring chance of the frame, do something with it? Of course, got him with the long red initially, missed the yellow. If he can, then he'll have dug himself out of a hole here this afternoon. 4-1, Higgins was looking the more fluent of the two. But these are long matches and they can ebb and flow. One. Well, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, disappointed where the cue ball is finished. He wanted it a little bit shorter there. It's just run on a bit, but he's okay. He's got this red into the left center, and he can play for pink or blue here. Seven. of open reds so no real work to do except keep that cue ball on a tight rein 13 doesn't have to develop any reds or anything like that so it's all about cue ball control holding himself together and they'd be feeling very positive 14 after winning that elongated last frame Yeah, it's been the case now for the last couple of years. He's, he's more 20. prepared than ever to just dig in and just try and graft out frames if that's what is required. Of course, he has made a century this afternoon, 123 in frame six. 21. But Higgins, the way he lost that last frame is quite <laughs> deflating. I mean, he was in control at one point. He had pink and black on the cushion with a lead in the frame. Heavily favourite to win it, he didn't. And it's not really looked comfortable in this frame. Yeah, just the way he lost that frame, John Higgins. 27. Very on Higgins like. Refused to, to go with a long pot on a black in that black ball fight and, and that. Sort of tells a little story about his confidence. There's no doubt about that. He had a 4-1 lead as well. This has gone wrong. 28. This has gone wrong. That's a poor shot. Could have played for the pink into the right centre. Tried to get top side of the blue, but as we see it again, just under hit. Can he take the cue ball in and out of ball, come back for a red? Not easy. It's no good. And the break. 33. Okay, yeah.
Mark, Mark Allen, 33. Foul and a miss. John Higgins four. Put it back here. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I get it put up for the green anyway. May I please on? So, balls go back. Paul Connolly just been helped by Livia Martil on the marker's desk. There he is. What? Forward, to me, to me. Go on, go on. Stop. Little bit back, little bit back. Bit more, bit more. Quarter ball. And a bit to your right. Touch more. Yeah. White well, looks all right there, doesn't it? Ball, maybe a touch forward. Sorry, the side. The other forward, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, the problem is no. forwards. Is that his forwards or Paul's? Anyway, they've sorted it out. So take two. So you can see red's full, so if he doesn't need it this time, a warning is coming. Just a slight adjustment. Turned into quite a lengthy session, just over three hours playing time. So I'm sure they'll be glad of a break, but they'll be back tonight. And it's not going to be an early night, is it? Let's be honest. Both giving everything. Higgins has dipped, certainly, as the afternoon's gone on. He's just desperately trying to get the lead back, coming back this evening. There you go. 25 and a half minutes since John Higgins potted the ball. And certainly not in the mood now to really to take any risks. Such an emotional roller coaster this sport. I actually saw John in the interval, just had a very brief chat with him. He was feeling good but 
obviously things can change and that last frame certainly was a, was a bit of a sickener for him. The fact he couldn't close it out. Yeah, looking at the possibility of the second red, it might go, it might go close to this corner pocket. Safety priority. Now there's this red just to the left of the pink. There's a pot into this bottom right corner pocket. John Higgins come down, he's had a look. It does. But can he take it on and avoid another red? Maybe not. And once again, maybe more confident John Higgins might have taken that red on. He's left it for Mark Allen. It was a poor safety. One. Good part, but very surprised the way he played it. I mean, the cue ball. You would think, you know, I mean, he'd not get that shot. Eight and nine times out of ten, you think you'd play for the green into the corner pocket. And even though he's got a good snooker, he may not get much more out of this. I mean, he's Doesn't want to go through the gap. Yeah. And there you see, like he only just gets one from that. Whereas if he had a play for the green into that green pocket off that red, you know, we could have won the frame. <laughs> Mark Allen. Both players have really sort of gone into the shell. That last frame. Really sort of put both of them in the shell. They're not playing very positively or confidently. No, it's right. It, it's sort of pint of blood snooker at the moment, isn't it? Just the nature of that last frame has made it that way. And of course, this is the last frame of the afternoon. Alan would be delighted with 4 4 from 4 1 down. Once again, he's dug in, hasn't he? You've got to admire it. No point looked like he was sort of going to give up or lose heart or any of that. Higgins looked at that. What? He does pick out some plants, doesn't he, John Higgins? So he'd be a good gardener. Green fingers. 
Now a chance. He's got a nice angle on this green. Get up for these reds. Yeah, it's sort of one last push needed, isn't it, this afternoon to try and get that two-frame lead restored. But it's just not happening at the moment for Higgins. John Higgins won. <coughs> Alan back in and of course he's in front in the frame so a couple of awkward reds he wouldn't need yellow on the cushion brown and all the rest of it he wouldn't be in front in a frame like this Five. Good pot with the rest. Nice angle on the pink. Quick glance at the score. 40 points in the lead. This pink and these two loose reds. And colours will be enough. Eleven. Well, well, of course, we saw it at the Players' Championship a few weeks ago. Mark Allen just digging in and winning frames. However, they need to be won. Made a century in frame six. Won a black ball, 56 and a half minute affair to take frame seven. This has been a bitty frame, but surely going to make it 4-4. All to play for coming back tonight, effectively, a best of 11. Yeah, and there's no doubt Mark Allen 19. will be feeling... A lot better than his opponent, for sure. He will fail. This is well, a victory this afternoon. From the position that he found himself in, a 4-1 down to come back. 4-all. Go into this evening session full of confidence. Yeah, and I'm sure John Higgins will come back for the next couple of hours. The match is still anyone's, but Mark Allen's got to be the happier of the two. As the opening session ends, he was 4-1 down, he dug in, and he ends the session level at 4-4.